Hello everyone. Um, I've been waiting to do a video until I got uh, through uh, some some stuff, some recent stuff. Um, I'm using my my uh, webcam on the computer because I've got some storage issues. Once I start doing videos and editing them on my um, on my desktop, I have to offload stuff. Anyway, I'm still trying to work out the best way to do that, and uh, recently I've just had some trouble with it. So I am just going to talk at you here on my on my desktop and hope I remember everything I want to say. I'm having a little fake bar. <laughs> so first of all, I guess I'll start with what's been happening in the past week or so. I got a regular mammogram and I got a call back, which like totally freaked me out. Um, I have dense breasts, which is harder for them to see when they do a mammogram. And my sister had breast cancer a couple of years ago. So anyway, they did a contrast dye mammogram, which is really weird. They inject you with a contrast dye and it like flushes you. It feels so weird, but I did think, well, it means my vascular system is working well. So, but I had like a little bit over a week to sort of sit with this. I already have health anxiety. I always, I don't, I shouldn't say always, it's changing, but I have had a habit of, or a tendency to any new thing that I experience, I think it's something awful and horrible. So, so I, I wanted to be open to possibilities with this. I wanted to be neutral and not think, well, I'm sure it's nothing because I'm healthy when I know people who have lived like really pure lives <laughs> and still gotten cancer. At a certain point, you just don't know. Nobody is 100% immune. So, um, I mean, we do things that help lower our risk. But at this point, I'm in a high risk category. Because my sister had breast cancer and because I have dense breasts. And they're not sure what the connection is yet between dense breasts and breast cancer, but there is one. So I'm not going to worry about that in my day to day, but I have started doing things or cut way down on alcohol. It's not like I drank a lot anyway. I drank maybe three or four drinks a week. Um, but I think at this point, even that feels like too much. And also, while I do it for the pleasure of creating drinks and the flavors and using herbs and things like that, on a psychological level, it's healthier for me to reserve that for more celebratory occasions and social occasions and not drink when I'm alone. Not that I drink a lot when I'm alone, I still have one drink, but I was talking to my counselor, I said, I think it has a different psychological effect or energetic. So anyway, I got this call back and I went, okay, I can deal with this. You know, I was pretty upset at first, but then I went, it's okay. It's still just screening. They don't know what's there yet. They just need to see better because of the way I am. And... I was actually doing really well. Um, I haven't been drinking any alcohol and I've been getting to bed uh, better. Um, I've been 
doing some yoga uh, every morning before my meditation practice and some different some different breath energy breath things that are sort of Aikido related been very conscientious about nutritional content and I'm like having flax seeds every day and um, any number of other small things that you don't need to know the details of. So I had a really good session with my counselor on Monday. It feels like there's a lot of good things going on in a number of areas of my life. And for some reason, well, I know the reason. I started obsessing about the, I have some cracks in my living room walls that have gotten bigger over the course of the past few years. And they freak me out to look at. I had a contractor, a neighbor's contractor, just stop by once to look at my crawl space, my foundation and in the attic. And he didn't see anything. But every time I looked at it, I'm like, oh my God, they're getting bigger. And it's it, it got to be like really obsessive. I mean, like really obsessive, crazy. Like I felt like I was going a little bit nuts. And I felt, and this was, let me see, this would have been Tuesday because I saw my counselor. So this was just yesterday. Um, I really spiraled into this like super uncomfortable, anxious place. It was horrible. And I called my counselor. I tried to do things too. I tried to, you know, I did some artwork, which I will show you in a little bit. Um, and I tried to do all the right things. But once that panic response really kicks in it's very very difficult to just step outside of it so I called my counselor and, and she talked me down and then in the in the afternoon yesterday I thought, okay I'm getting out of the house I'm getting to a place where I can't look at the stupid cracks I'm gonna go to my neighbor because my counselor said do you have a friend that you could go have tea with and I thought I didn't really feel like I had anybody that close that I could contact. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to call my neighbor, see if she's around and go chat. And so I did. And I hung out with her and told her all the different things that were going on. And she was like super supportive and said, if there's anything I do to help, let me know. And then when I was walking home, I ran into another neighbor who had been out of town for 10 weeks on a road trip. And so we chatted for a while and I told her what was going on. And the more I talked to people, and just said, yeah, it, you know, I didn't volunteer it. But if they said, well, with my one neighbor, I did. I told her what was going on because anyway, that was part of the reason for going over there. But if people asked, I told them, you know, and I had I was given a number of opportunities to actually do that. Um, I mean, they came up organically, energetically. And that was just like super helpful. So this morning I went in to do the contrast dye imaging and I was like, boy, I was, I was nervous and it was, it was a, just a long process, but the radiologist was really awesome. It's so funny to go to doctors and they're now like your kid's age. It's like, what a trip. Anyway, he was really good. The women were really good. Um, and they didn't find anything. Um, all right, both both breasts look fine, um, but he did suggest that because of my sister and because of the density of my breasts that I am in a high risk category that I may want to do some other kind of imaging like MRIs, which would be more expensive. But anyway, but I so it's like everything calmed down after that, and even the cracks in the stupid walls. It's like okay, I had a guy come out, and this is the thing. I have a lot of things that make me anxious. I mean, almost unbearably so, but I do know how to address them. I don't hide from them, which is a healthy thing, I think. I mean, there is progress being made, but when I feel like I did yesterday, I feel like there's no progress. I'm still the same messed up person, <laughs> which is a bad way to, to think. So. So I've been kind of quiet. I, I, I thought about making a video beforehand, and I was like, I can't talk about this yet. I, I had to keep myself like super neutral. I didn't want to say, there's nothing there. There's nothing going to be there. And think something gone that may have actually already been there. Or think think something actually there that wasn't there. I, I, had, to, I had to allow myself 
to just say super neutral. So I so I managed to get through that. It's like, oh my God. And then I'm getting, um, I had a wall guy come out and he didn't seem too alarmed with cracks. So I'm going to have a structural engineer come out tomorrow to make sure that it isn't something with the, with the foundation or anything like that. So it's been, it's been weird. And I think this whole year for me is about facing stuff that I don't, I have not wanted to face about moving in directions. I have like been resistant to moving into, um, yeah. And I, and I listened to Annie's video on Lamas today and, and talking about how Lamas is that, that time where it said, okay, you still, you still have time to work on these things. And I have been working on them. So, okay, next subject. I finished Waking the Witch and it's an awesome book. I recommend it to everybody. It was very, a very inclusive book. It made me a little bit more open to allowing that maybe I'm a witch. I, I hate, I hate, I hate, I shouldn't say I hate. I'm resistant to labels, especially if my kind of practice is farther from what would define what is a witch. But in that book, the whole idea of this umbrella of, of witches is that it is a path that is you know, almost this, this response to Abra Abrahamic, you know, patriarchal uh, paths that allow someone to practice in whatever way is most authentic for them. So that was just, it's just like a really inspiring book because they have chapters on um, artists, they have chapters on, you know, activists who have been um, uh, uh, witches. I mean, they talk about TV witches and, and, and its portrayal in the media. And just, I, I highly, it's just, it's a great book. So it's by Pam Grossman. So I finished that and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try a spell. I've never really done spell work and, and I've never really done spell work because I felt like I couldn't do it right. I would have to follow these particular rules about how you do it. And then I thought, you know what, no, I'm going to do this however I want to do it. And for me, the spell is about allowing into myself physical bodily comfort, allowing that, yes, I am deserving of physical bodily comfort, and I am deserving of allowing that energy into myself, and vibrant health, where I have the energy to do all the things that are part of an authentic uh, life that contributes to, you know, my community and the planet and all of that. So, so I'm doing a little working and I'm doing it for however long I want to do it. And I'm going to end it when I want to do it. And I'm not expecting like some immediate result, bam, things are going to be different. But the way I see it is an energetic intention and doing it for a number of days is just sort of pulling that energy into my into my consciousness every day. So, so that's been an interesting thing. And um, I don't know if there's something else I was going to talk about, I think, as far as a path. So I think that, like I was just saying, my path is going to be my path. And it's not going to follow anybody else's rules. And that's why, and that's why I ha haven't had an easy time being part of groups. I mean, the Catholic Church, whatever. And then I belonged to another group that was Self-Realization Fellowship. And it's like I, I found that there were too many things about it that weren't authentic to me. Um, I could find a place to meditate with other people. That would be more generic. And, and I'm still thinking that would be a healthy thing for me to do. But as actually being part of a Zendo or something like that, you know, I think my Aikido Dojo gives me kind of that. Um, so that's still something to work out. 
so I do I do my own stuff. I'm trying to be a little bit more cognizant of full moons, new moons. Obviously, new moon is coming up right now, and just honor that, not with any like super rigid kind of framework, but what feels right to me at the time. And I kind of feel like there are casual rituals and there are more formal rituals. And uh, for me, of course, it's it's a lot of my own paths would have to do with uh, art and and my garden and and herbs and that sort of thing. Um, so speaking of art, I, I have two people bought flag sets from me. Uh, one watches me here, so thank you. The other one is, is an old Flickr friend. I still have one set left. Do do do. I like this one a lot, actually. If nobody buys this, I'll hang it up. But these, they're, they're $30. There's uh, nine flags in them, and they're on a nice, strong cord. Um, so I call them my goddess flags. I'll probably be making some more uh, as time goes by. I've had some ideas, but now they're gone, so I have to kind of find them again. And then I've been working with some negatives that I made, again, that have to do with my body and honoring my body and honoring what my body does for me that I don't even have to think about. And there's a, not, uh, there's a wonderful CD set called The Joyous Body that Clarissa Pinkola Estes um, has, which is great. It's like six CDs. It's really nice. Um, so I've been thinking about that, honoring my body and being grateful for what my body does and also what my body holds energetically, you know, emotionally, spiritually, and all of that. So I, I have done a few of these that I've put on Instagram. I've put these on Instagram, but I had to work through my exposure process and, and what I really wanted to do with them. So so these are these are large cyanotype prints that are made from um, a negative and then the botanicals. And so this one is is really sort of what I hold at, at my core. Uh, so I have California mugwort, California poppies. Um, I think that's all I put in this one. It's California mugwort and California poppies. And then I put a little bit extra on this side and, and that side. And then the fennel. Uh, because fennel, to me, especially uh, especially the Bay Area, has a lot of fennel right along the, um, right along the bay and, and the ocean. So this is very much, you know, kind of my California me and what's, what's part of my core. And then this one... This one I used wild grape leaves to do the heart shapes, and then and then the feathers. I have a collection of feathers that I found mostly in my yard. Uh, and to me, this one is about oh, it's like holding both receiving and offering love. And I like the idea of the feathers kind of at that place just below the solar plexus, which is sort of that. To me, it's sort of. This is, this is like falling in love, you know, and, and falling in love could be falling in love with it, you know, it could be with a passion, it could be with a person. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm thinking about doing a whole series kind of like this, uh, using, using just different parts of, uh, well, my body, because these are very much about me. Uh, so I've been working on that. Um, I'm going up to New York this weekend to see my niece and talk about art stuff. And I really, I really need to get on the ball with the art stuff. I, I want to get on the ball with the art stuff. I, I need to just really work with more, produce more. I want to pull out my paints. So I have some of those prints that turned out a little too dark. And so I think I'm going to, I, there's a bleaching process I can use for those. I'm going to take take a little bit of the color out, lighten them up, and then I'm going to use some watercolor paints on them and do some playing around and see how much energy I can get going for the artwork because ultimately I want that to be part of my livelihood and that's something that that's one of these things that I really have to face. My spousal support is not going to last forever and I pull in a little bit of money here and there but I have to get like a lot 
a lot more serious about it. Um, so, yeah. So that's what's going on. It seems like a lot. <laughs> no wonder I was feeling like I was going crazy. And I still think about <laughs> moving back to California. When I was feeling my worst yesterday, I started looking at real estate up on the coast <laughs> because it was a nice distraction. It's always going to be in my heart, but I don't know. I am where I am right now, and, and right now I have the opportunity to, to do the work that I need to do. I just have to get a little bit more organized about it. Um, and, and just keep working on nourishing and nurturing my body and energetically allowing all the good stuff to come in. So I'm not bogged down by, you know, the, still the, the grief of the loss of my marriage and, you know, being so far from my kids and just sort of just holding on to the good parts and, and not thinking about the loss, because really it's all still within me. Everything's within me. All our experiences are within us all the time. We don't really lose anything. Um, so, yeah, so that's it. I thought I'd just check in and talk about those different things. I did find a local group that meets, uh, they call, they're called the Black Hats of Richmond, and it seemed like a really nice meetup group. They don't charge. People meet usually like at a restaurant or something, and the next, the next uh, meetup is going to be in a few weeks, couple weeks, and they're going to meet a, uh, at a me Mexican restaurant and um, and talk about divination. And they just say bring your bring your cards and and uh, and I have been working with the cards. Tarot still does not come natural for me, um, so I'm still learning it. I have a long way to go with tarot. I don't know, maybe it, maybe it will just never be part of my path because of the way my brain works. Um, I don't know, but I do have a lot of fun uh, just reading about stuff like that. And there's a lot of that in Waking the Witch. It's awesome. Please go out, get her book. It's not that expensive. It was hardbound, and I think it was like under $15. It's it's a really, really awesome book. And that's all. I hope you're all doing well. And if I can, oh, oh, that's what else I was going to do. I was going to tell you about some Instagram people that I think everybody might like to follow. Um, so there's a woman, there's a, a lot of these women are witches but more like herbal witches that sort of thing and um a lot of them are from well one of them's from california and i have really been enjoying her instagram and she's called the wise witch where is she i think it's uh w-i-s-e-w-y-c-h and she's just just like oh there's the, there are these young women that just have such wonderful energy yeah, the wise witch, uh, T H E W I S E W Y T C H. So she is awesome. Um, also, One Willow Apothecaries is another one. Um, who else? Um, Gathering Time, T H Y M E, is is uh, an herbal shop up in San Rafael. Ancestral Apothecaries is a woman that I worked with in um, in Oakland. She doesn't post all that much. Uh, you Grow Girl, all one word, Gala. I know her from way back um, at Flickr, but she produces like gardening books and things like that. And, and she's up in Toronto area, I think. And she is absolutely amazing. I love her too. And I think those are the main ones, uh, the main ones that, um, that I really, really get a lot of and get a lot of inspiration, at least as far as like the, the witchy, um, 
uh, herbal community. There's other people that I follow that are art related. That's, that's a whole nother follow ax there. So that's it. This is a long video. I'm sorry if it was too boring. You can scrub through. I sometimes do that. All right. Bye-bye, everyone.